Welcome to our continuation, Sri Ishupanishad course, right? Did you study the book before? Yes. Oh, you did? Really? Yeah. I did it before, didn't I? Yeah. I taught it before. Here. Uh, you know, Where? Online. 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 Are you, you're doing the online, are you? Practices. We just finished the issue Panisha. Okay, we're doing the, this is the live class here. Okay, Sri Isha Panishad. Lesson two. Invocation. Did you learn the mantra? Invocation? You know the mantra? You know? Yes? Everyone recite Om Purnam Madha Purnam Midam Purnat Purnam Udachyate Purnasya Purnam Madhaya 
नमे वशिष्य थे without looking Oh, no. 
Okay, every day you have to recite. Every day in the morning when you wake up, Om Purnam Ada, right? Maybe you remember. Om Purnam Ada. Om Purnam Ada. Meaning Om means the complete whole. Om. The complete whole. And Purnam means perfectly complete. So, Purnam. Lord Krishna is perfectly complete. He is the complete whole, he is perfectly complete. We give the example, we may, we may have a book, and you rip a page out of the book, then the book is not complete anymore. But Lord Krishna, so many units, so many universes are coming from him but still he is complete. <coughs> spiritual mathematics, in spiritual mathematics, Krishna plus everything is equal to Krishna. And Krishna minus everything is equal to <coughs> Krishna. That's spiritual mathematics, right? Ah, the complete whole, that complete whole is perfectly complete. So this verse is describing the, per the complete whole, that complete whole. Right? The personality of Godhead is perfect and complete. And even though so many units, so many universes emanate from him, he remains the complete balance. So this is the nature of Purnam. This is Krishna's special nature, that he is complete. People who are not devotees, they cannot understand how if you take something away from them, he can still be complete. You know, just like if you lose your money, you don't feel complete anymore, right? If you lose your, if you lose your purse with all your keys and your cards and everything in it, you're not complete anymore. But Krishna is complete even though so many things come from him. He remains perfect and complete. So that is the nature of the complete whole. Complete whole must contain everything. We said everything comes from Krishna. Alright? Everything comes from Krishna. So Prabhupada explains here, some people they say, oh God is without form. It has no form. People, they will worship like that. They will say, oh, God cannot have a form because they think if they have a form, it must be material. But they don't understand that Krishna has, Krishna has a spiritual form. Krishna's form is spiritual. It's not material. So people have a puzzled, what? Spiritual also has a form? They think that form means material form, but they cannot, they don't know that form can also be spiritual. Lord Krishna has a form and it's not material, it's spiritual. We have a form, but our form is material. But the Lord has a form which is not material. So Prabhupada says, if He with a capital H, meaning He, meaning the Supreme Lord, if He were formless, 
or if he was less than his creation, in any way he would not be complete. Just like if we have a form and he doesn't have a form, then we have to be, we'd be greater than him. Right? If we have, because we have a form. And if we say God has no form, then we must be greater than God. We have something God doesn't have. But Prabhupada explains here, the complete whole must contain everything, both within and beyond our experience. Otherwise, he cannot be complete. So this is how we understand <coughs> God or the complete whole, that complete personality of Godhead, that He has everything which is in our experience and beyond it also. So Srila Prabhupada explains this in the invocation. We have to understand God not with our limited mind and senses. Our mind and senses are limited. They will not understand things very well. But if we hear from the scriptures, then we can understand. Just like we explained, there were different sources of evidence. Do you remember? Different type, different ways we could get knowledge. One way was by the senses, by direct perception of the senses, just like seeing or touching, like that we get knowledge, knowledge acquiring senses. Another way to get knowledge is What? By the hypothesis, right, by the mind, right, by <laughs> hypothesis or speculation. I think like this. In my opinion, it's like this, you see. This is hypothesis. I think like that. Speculation. So not reliable of. And the third way was by shakta, by spiritual sound, taking knowledge from authorities. So we get perfect knowledge from the authorities. So here we want to understand how the complete whole must contain everything. Okay, Om Purnam Ada Purnam Idam. Purnam Idam. Meaning? Purnam meaning complete, perfectly complete. And Idam referring to this world, this phenomenal world. So this world is complete. We see everything is provided in this world. You get, we get everything we need to maintain our bodies, to live in this world. We build motor cars, we build houses. Where do we get everything from? It's all provided from this world. It's all coming from this material world. We don't get it from any other place. Everything is here on this planet. Everything is provided for us. The water, the rain provides the water. We get air to breathe. We get the food we need to eat. Everything is arranged for our maintenance. So that is the complete nature of this world, that everything is provided for us. All emanations from Him, such as this phenomenal world, 
are perfectly equipped as complete wholes. So Lord Krishna is complete and everything which comes from him is also complete. And what comes from him? Different universes are coming from him. They're coming of course from Maha Vishnu. Maha Vishnu is coming from Lord Krishna and from Maha Vishnu, Maha Vishnu is laying on the causal ocean and the universes are coming out from his body. And each of the universes are perfect and complete. Just like in each universe there's a sun. Could you imagine to be here in the pl without the sun? When there's no sun, it will be cold, it will be dark, right? Will not be very pleasant if there's no sun. And if there's no moon, moon is also necessary. Moon is cooling and refreshing. The moon provides the juices which are in the vegetables. So everything is provided for us by the arrangement of the Supreme Lord. Who put the sun there? Who put the moon there? Who arranged all these things? And they're all moving in perfect order. Every day the sun rises and sets. Every night there's a moon moving. It's all arranged, very system. Oh. Something. <laughs> Some things are arranged. Yeah. <coughs> Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. <coughs> Okay, Om Purnam Ada Purnam Idam Purnat Purnam Udachate. So Purnat Purnam Udachate, meaning whatever is produced of the complete whole. Oh, Purnat Purnam Udachate. Whatever is produced of the complete whole is also complete by itself, right? The completeness of the world, some examples from nature of the completeness of the world, how everything is complete. Probably we give some examples here, just like here. Purnam idam. Although the ocean water, although the ocean water so much, when there is scarcity of water, you have you have to take help of Krishna. He is he who evaporate the water. He who make it. He'll make it a cloud. Then when it falls down, then it becomes sweet. Otherwise you cannot touch. Everything is complete. <laughs> Prabhupada is explaining about the water in the ocean. So the water in the ocean is salty. Sea water, <laughs> right? You bathe in the sea. You do go bathing and you go to the, you people wouldn't go to the beach. No. <laughs> Westerners like to go. <laughs> Lord Chaitanya used to go. 
every day, three times a day, in Puri, to take bath in the sea. Did you go take bath in the sea at Puri? No. No? It's, it's a holy place. Lord Chaitanya bathed Haridas Thakur in the water and the sea at Puri. I said from t the day, now this is a holy place. So the sea is salt water. You bathe in the sea, salt water, you know, after you bathe in the sea, you have to take bath again because your body is all salt, you know, have all the salt water on your skin. I don't know how Lord Chaitanya managed three times a day go to put, take bath in the sea. Anyway, the water from the ocean, you cannot drink it because it's all salt. But Krishna arranges, he sends the clouds and the clouds will evaporate water, they'll take the water from the ocean in the form of the cloud. And then the cloud will carry the water over onto the land. And when it comes onto the land, then there will be some mountains and things. The cloud will have to rise, will drop the water in the form of rain. Right? So that rain water is sweet. But the water from the ocean is salty. But the cloud takes the water up in the, in the cloud and the water is evaporated when it's in the cloud. But then when it comes onto the, then it falls down as rain. But sweet. So rain water is sweet. So this way Lord Krishna is providing everything. Everything is complete by the arrangement of Lord Krishna. And there are many other examples also, just like uh, photosynthesis. Did you study photosynthesis? Yes. You can tell me what happens. What is photosynthesis? Yeah. Well, I know uh, the trees, from the trees, you know, the, when you, the, the trees, the plants and so on, they will, they grow and they will take in the oxygen, carbon, and, carbon, carbon dioxide, right? Yeah. It's just a Yeah. And give out carbon monoxide. You, <laughs> There's a whole arrangement, a whole balance in nature for the toxics which we're, we're breathing out. What are we breathing out? Carbon dioxide. Yeah? And, and the trees and the plants, they will take all that in and they will give off, they will give off the, the natural purified air. So, there's a balance in nature to provide everything, to provide all the things we need. And, and Prabhupada gives another example. Uh, That's one example from the sea. But there's another example. 
and the example is when the child is born. So immediately there is milk in the breast of the mother. That is nature's arrangement. Before birth, the, the food, the, chief, the child immediately requires the mother's breast. There is milk supply immediately. So before the child comes, the mother's breast will not, the milk will not flow from her breast. But as soon as the child comes, by the nature of, by the arrangement of nature, the milk flows in her breast and she can feed her child. Right? So that is nature's arrangement. Child cannot drink anything, child cannot take any solid food, just born, only thing can take is the mother's breast. And as soon as the child is born, then the milk will flow from the mother's breast and the child can drink. So there are many examples in nature how everything is provided for our needs by the arrangement of the Supreme Lord. We are not aware, we just take everything for granted. We're not aware of it. We don't see how all these things are arranged for us by the will of the Supreme Lord. We just take everything for granted, right? Sometimes the mother and father will tell the child like that, you know, you just take everything for granted. You don't know how hard we're working, you know. <laughs> You don't know how hard we work to provide for you, you know. <laughs> but uh, we don't notice how hard Lord Krishna is working, arranging everything for us through the material nature, providing everything, all the needs, all the resources, it's all provided by the will of the Lord. So. Krishna consciousness is to be aware of these things, to accept the arrangement of the Supreme Lord and to use everything properly in His service. So Pra Prabhupada writes, Thus, this phenomenal world is also complete in itself. The twenty-four elements of which this material universe is a temporary manifestation are arranged to produce everything necessary for the maintenance and subsistence of this universe. Right? Twenty-four elements of material nature. Right? Do you know those elements? Have you heard that before? In the Bhagavad Gita, Krishna describes, first of all, he says, Bhumerapo nalo vayu kamano budere vacha ahankarai diyame bina prakritir ashtada. Do you know the meaning? Huh? You don't know this verse? You don't read the Bhagavad Gita? Not reading Bhagavad Gita? Bumerapo nalo vayu. You know the meaning? No. Oh my goodness. Earth, water, fire, air, ether, mind, intelligence and ego. All together these eight comprise my separated material energy. Krishna's separated material energy is being described. Earth, water, fire, air, ether. Five great elements, right? Yes. And they're all arranged in a very systematic manner. You have five gross elements and three subtle elements, right? Yes. 
What are the three subtle elements? Right, yes. So three subtle elements. Hmm. Intelligence comes out of the mode of passion. Mind comes out of the mode of goodness. And the senses come out of the mode of ignorance. Now we have five knowledge acquiring senses. Right? Knowledge acquiring senses. What are the five knowledge acquiring senses? Yes, eyes. Ears, nose, tongue, and skin. Skin, your skin, yes. Five knowledge and five working senses. And you have five working senses, right? What are the five working senses? You know? What's working in your body? There was a one boy came yesterday, mother told me, the young boy Prahlad, he was born, he had no anus, right? He had no anus. So that's one of the working senses, evacuating organ. The evacuating organ and then reproduction organ. You want to be able to reproduce. And then you have also hands, working senses, the hands and the legs. And then speech, tongue. These are the working senses. So five knowledge acquiring senses, five working senses, and five sense objects. The, set, the objects of the senses, right? Just like what is the object of the eyes? The object of the senses, object of the eyes will be? Huh? Right, yes, yeah, seeing, right, seeing, and seeing. We get pleasure from seeing things, right? People go to movies. Oh, she, she's embarrassed, she doesn't cut her out, you know, she's going to go to movies, watch movies. Of course, now you don't even have to go to movies, you just have a mobile phone and you're watching movies all the time and Instagram and everything, watching things. And so seeing and then another sense object, so, sound, right? So sight, sound, sound, some sounds are pleasing, some sounds are painful, right? The, you hear the dog sometimes and the, the dog's barking. So sound is there and then smell, the aroma, the aroma, right? The fragrance of the air, the aroma, perfumes, right? Eau de cologne, all of these things. And men have the aftershave lotion and all of these things, you know? Different things for the, the aroma, for the, the smell. And then there's also the sound, smell, taste, right? Kurma, Colombo, right? Tamil curry, yeah? nice prasadam, mm. taste, very important, taste. And then and touch, one touch, touch, okay. So touch. We feel some sometimes people people just by touch people can read. They can read braille. Blind people learn to read by touch. 
So these are the sense objects. So there's five working senses. There's five knowledge acquiring senses. There's five gross elements. There were five sense objects. And there are three subtle, yes. And then there's one more, the unmanifested stage of all the elements. So like that you have twenty-four elements and they're related to each other. The creation comes about from subtle to gross. And Prabhupada actually quoted <laughs> from the Bible. He said, in the Bible it says, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with, and people say like that, that they say everything comes from Om, right? So in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was Om. <laughs> you know? Of course the Christians won't say Om, but they would say everything, you know, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was God. So we say Om, everything comes from Om. So sound is the finest element and sound is only in one, sound you will get in ether, right? There were five elements, earth, water, fire, air, ether. Ether means no air, just space. That's what ether is, the absence of air. You take away the air, you're left with ether. You're left with space. The, if you go further up, you know, up in the sky, you go way up, 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 less air. You go, there's only ether, there's only space there. <coughs> when the spacemen, you know, the spaceships go, they travel in the ether, in the space. So in space there's only sound. There's nothing else, only sound. <coughs> So ether and sound is the first element. With so how do you perceive sound? Do you perceive sound with your hands? No. no. How do you perceive sound? With your tongue? Yes. No. How do you perceive sound? Yes. With the ears, yes. The ears. <coughs> right? Do you do you enjoy the food with the ears? No. no. Sound is the function of the ears, right? Of course, the, man, the dead man also has ears, but he cannot hear anything. Why? Why can the dead person, he, already, he has ears, why can he not hear? Huh? Because he's already dead, right? Dead person cannot hear anything, he has senses, he has ears, can hear anything, can see it. <laughs> so the ears perceive sound. Sound is the first element. Next element is air. With air, there is touch. Just like when we put the air con on, you can feel the air. Right? You can feel the air. Touch. You can't smell it. You can't see it. You can't taste it. But you can feel it. The sense of touch is there. How do we perceive touch? Do we, is it with our eyes? We touch, how touch with the skin, right? With the skin. And then after air, next element is fire. And fire has a form. There'll be a little candle light, has, and there's a big fire, a blazing fire. They have forms. And how do we see forms? With our eyes, right? So each element. With fire there is form. There is also, there is also sound. 
and there is also touch in fire. It's all in fire. Just like in air, there is also sound. In the ether, there's only sound. But in air, there is sound and also touch. And then in fire, there is sound and there is touch. There is also form. And then the next element is water. And what, how do you understand water? How do we know water? By the taste, right? Krishna says, I am the taste in water, right? So taste, water has a taste. Water also has form. It also has, it also has a touch. And there's also sound in water. You can hear it. So, then finally, earth. Earth has the fragrance. I, I, I am the original aroma of the earth. So, earth has all the, all the objects. Earth has taste. It has, uh, it has, it has a, a smell. It has taste. It has touch. It has form. And so, sound all the elements. So you can see progression from ether to air to fire to water to earth. Different qualities are there in each of the elements. So creation comes from sato to gross. The air, the ether comes first and the last is the earth. So Prabhupada said 24 elements of which the material universe is a temporary manifestation. It's temporary, it appears it will remain for some time and after some time it will be destroyed. Right? Just like, what? Just like they put up buildings and then after some time they knock them all down again. You know, they built the Twin Towers in New York, right? Yes. The Twin Towers, and then they came along, the terrorists came, and they knocked them down. And then Americans, they built up new ones. They built new Twin Towers after they knocked it down, they built up a new Twin Tower. So that's the nature of material world. The, some things are built, they'll stay for some time, and then they're all destroyed. And you get whole cities, whole civilizations like that. In the past, there were great kingdoms. And they had, just like Lord Rama, he had a great kingdom in Ayodhya. But that was long ago, that was in Treta Yuga. And then the Pandavas came, and they were in Hastinapur. And they had a big palace in Hastinapur. And then Krishna came, he went to Dwarka. And where all of these things were there, but then in course of time they're gone. They were great empires. Navadweep, Lord Chaitanya was living in Navadweep. It was the center of learning. People were coming from everywhere to study there. And Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was there. Now, you know, we don't see Navadvip as being anywhere very special. You know, it's a, a, it's a town, not a very big town. But in the past it was very big and there were many scholars and pundits there. So the material world is temporary. Just like in the past, Many people used to live in the, in the countryside, but then people all moved to the city and you got people all moving to Kuala Lumpur. And you go to Kuala Lumpur now and everywhere it's big condominiums, oh, you know, they're building everywhere these condominium high-rise buildings. But they won't stay forever. How long will they be there for? They build these, it will stay maybe 
30 years and then after 30 years, you know, maybe they have to knock it down and build up something else. Or maybe people, people come and they go another place after, you know. People don't stay always in the one place, they move. Just like if you go to Cambodia, if in Cambodia there's Angkor Wat. Did you ever hear Angkor Wat? It's one of the wonders of the world, Angkor Wat. It was built by a civilization of people. They built this beautiful big temple, stone temple, magnificent, very big and very artistically built, exactly according to Vastu, exactly according to the Vastu Shastra. And people are amazed how they could build it. And we see also in Egypt, if you look at the pyramids, they built the pyramids. And even today, builders, they're, they're puzzled how they could ever build these things. Because it's so difficult to get everything perfectly, you know, aligned. They said, you know, when they put up a building, they, they would never be able to do anything like what they did, like what the pyramids are. They're constructed so carefully, so amazing. They were just, they're just amazing how they did it. So Angkor Wat, I would say Angkor Wat, they built this huge temple and there were many temples. But now, you go there today, nobody's there. Where did all the people go? They just moved, they all moved, they all went some other place. So these things happen in course of time. They go some other place. It's not that they don't exist anymore, you know, but they exist, but they just moved, right? And so the same way, material world is a temporary manifestation. This this material energy is Krishna's energy, but it's temporary, it's not eternal. It will be for some time and then just like motor cars. You know, now you have this motor, but now that motor car is not going to be there in 50 years. You know, after 50 years, where will it be? It will be transformed into other things, you know. They, take them apart and melt them down and re, you know, re make some, something else out of them. And the same way with the houses, the buildings, they don't stay forever, they fall down and you know, the, the materials will get used to build something else. So the material world, the whole material world is like that. It's a temporary manifestation. Big cities, they may be big cities today, but in 200 years time, or even 100 years, they may not be anymore a city there. You don't know what the future will be. But the material world is like that. Sometimes it's visible, sometimes it's manifest, and then sometimes it's not. And then again, creation. Just like the night comes, the night when the night comes and everything goes down, everything stops, everybody goes to sleep. But then the next day everybody wakes up again and all the activities begin again. So the same way the material world is created maintains for some time and then finished. And then again, another creation. After annihilation, again creation comes. <coughs> again and in Bhagavad Gita, Lord Krishna describes, again and again the day comes and again the night falls. So after the, the night, the day comes and then the night will come, and then again the day will come, right? So creation, maintenance, destruction. 
and after destruction, then again creation. Not immediately, but after some time. Like that. So, everything is necessary, everything is arranged, everything is created for us. No other unit in the universe need make an, an, an ex, extraneous effort to try to maintain the universe. I mean, extreme, I mean, from outside the universe. We don't need to get help from anywhere else. Everything is there within the universe. The sun is there, the sunlight is important, the moon is there, the different stars and planets are all there. Everything is arranged. The clouds, the wind, the air, everything is provided for us to maintain the universe. And here you can see the human body, a complete manifestation of the consciousness of the living being and it is obtained after evolving through 8,400,000 species of life in the cycle of birth and death. So we get the human body, not by chance, but we evolved through different species of life. Eight million, four hundred thousand different species. Only four hundred thousand are human species. There are different human species, right? We have Chinese, African, Russian, and like that, the Caucasian, you know, all these different bodies are there. So different races and uh, different species of life. So we get the human body. The human body is a special responsibility when you come to the human form of life. Then it's very important to use it properly. Proper use of the human body means you don't live like animals. The animals, what, what are the animals doing? Yes, right. Animals are eating and sleeping, mating and defending. But human life, we also have to do these things. We also have to eat and sleep and you can also mate and defend, but you have to do something else. Huh? You have to have religion, you have to practice religion, you have to practice Dharma, you have to understand who is God and what is our relationship with Him. If we don't, then we are just like the animal, just only eat, sleep, make, defend. We don't use the body properly. So if we don't, if we live like animal, next life we'll become the animal. Human life is special because in human life you can get free from birth and death. <coughs> Taking birth and dying, going through birth, many births, it is a lot of trouble. We don't want to keep taking birth and dying. We want to finish the business, to get out of human life. So, purnasya purnam adaya. Even though so many complete units emanate from him, purnam eva vashishyate. He remains the complete balance, right? This is Lord, the Supreme Lord's position. That he is, even though so many universes are coming from him, 
but he's still the complete balance, he's in complete control of everything. <coughs> Prabhupada says, what kind of God is only zero? Some people, they, they don't believe in God, they're atheists. Other people, they say, oh, God is zero. So Prabhupada said, in the spiritual world, the one is Purna. And if you take the one, it is still one. <coughs> See, this is spiritual arithmetic. If you take the one, it is still one. They, that they cannot understand, the poor brain. They think materially. If the one, if the, if the one is complete, and if one is taken away, then it becomes zero. Does it? If the one is, if the one is taken away from one, then it becomes that is material, right? But in spiritual arithmetic, Krishna, take away everything. What are you left with? Krishna, right. So, Krishna is not zero, never becomes zero. One plus one is Krishna plus everything? Krishna. Krishna. And Krishna minus everything? Krishna. Right. So Krishna is God, is never zero. What kind of God is only zero? The Upanishads say, Purnasya Purnam Adaya Purnam Eva Vashishyate. If from the complete you take the complete, the complete remains. If from the complete you take, you take the complete, the complete remains. Right? From Krishna, you take away Krishna and you're still left with Krishna. So this is the inconceivable nature. Krishna expands millions of times, still he is Krishna. Purnam eva vashishyate. Krishna is so full that even Krishna expands millions of times, still he's the same thing, Krishna. So Krishna can expand so many times, so many universes, he's everywhere, he's in everything. How many super souls do we have in this room today? How many super souls are there in this room? One. One super soul. One Krishna. He's in everyone's heart. But it's one Krishna. Not many Krishnas. Right. Good. Yes. He will eat everything but keep everything. Just like here, something being offered to Krishna, to God, he will eat, but he will, he will leave everything for you as prasada. How? Purnasya purnam adaya purnam eva vasishyate. This is God's power. He will eat everything but he will leave, every, he will keep everything for you as prasada. Just think, if you offered everything and there was nothing, 
Oh. <laughs> you wouldn't be offering so much, would you? That happened. There was a one, one, the, the one man he was offering, and the deity at the prasadam. I go up, say, hey, "You're only a deity." Who told you? <laughs> Wasn't a very good devotee. <laughs> okay, we'll stop here tonight. There's so many other things. It's getting late. Okay, Hare Krishna. Oh, nice prasadam. See, Krishna is not taking all the prasadam. Hmm? This is from Rajapur Jagannath. Oh, from, Raj from Mayapur. Rajapur Jagannath. Please come, come forward. Jo jata hai, so kata hai. Do you know Hindi? Hindi ata? Jo jata hai, so kata hai. He who comes gets. First come, first serve. He's a Oriya devotee. Huh? He's from Orissa. Orissa. Jagannath Prasad. Jagannath Prasad.